if you're like me and you like paddling rivers and creeks, I just can't stop. I have to see what's around the next bend. And I would just go all day until a little bit before dark because I just want to know what's around the next bed. It's like a thirst that can't be quenched. Hey folks, how you doing? It's Pete here. Welcome back to Ontario Fishing Quest. Join me today as I'm going to be doing a good review of my Novacraft Prospector 15 in blue steel. Blue steel material is a very light yet very strong composite material. It's a combination of aramid, which is a form of Kevlar or it's similar to Kevlar, and carbon fiber. So this is a super strong material. It's a very, very tough and durable material. It can handle the roughest of conditions and it can handle the normal wear and tear that we put boats through on our backcountry trips. It's going over log jams, dragging it up onto the campsite. You know how it goes. As you see it here, this is just the material on its own. Uh, there's no gel coat on it. You can choose to have a gel coat put on it in one of Novacraft's colors that they offer, which you can view on their website. But I personally just love the, the normal finish of the blue steel material. It's, it's so beautiful. So the length of this canoe is 15 feet, and I absolutely love this length for solo use. It's very maneuverable and easy to handle, which is surprising considering the bigger shape of the hull. A nice advantage of the 15 foot length over going up to a 16 footer is that there's no supporting thwart between the rear seat and the center yoke. I prefer this personally as I find it gives me more options with how I can arrange my gear in the canoe. So here I'm using two 115 liter canoe bags just to demonstrate how well these fit in the boat. These hold a ton of gear. And my wife and I like to bring along a cooler bag on our canoe trips and it still fits in with these huge bags no problem. This canoe can hold up to 850 pounds, which is just a ton of capacity, and it has enough room to arrange your gear comfortably and safely. You can easily fit in at least two of these 115 liter bags, and there's definitely enough room to add in a food barrel or a cooler as well if that's your thing. The 36 inch wide beam along with the shallow arch bottom of this Prospector 15 really allow it to have excellent primary and secondary stability. Now it's not quite as stable as a flat bottom cottage style canoe, but it is absolutely stable enough and it provides you with a very confident platform for fishing, which is very important to me. So this canoe has some rocker and it's two and a half inches. If you're not familiar with rocker, basically it's the amount that the canoe goes upwards from the center towards the stern and from the center towards the bow. How much it arches up one way and arches up the other way. A canoe with zero rocker will look like this on the bottom. A canoe with some rocker looks like that, if you get the picture. A canoe that is meant for weekends at the cottage paddling flat water lakes will have little to no rocker at all. In contrast, a canoe that is dedicated to whitewater travel can have up to four or five inches of rocker. The higher rocker means that the canoe will be much more versatile in whitewater and easier to maneuver very quickly. The Prospector 15's 2.5 inch rocker sits nicely in the middle, and it's very versatile and can be used in either scenario or really anything in between. The boat stays very dry in rough waves that can handle tripping in whitewater or flat water very well. If you'd like to see more on just how well the Prospector 15 handles white water, I'm going to link a couple of videos in the description for you. 
The videos that I'm going to link in the description are by Jim Baird. Now, Jim Baird has taken his Blue Steel Prospector 15 through some real rough white water conditions in Algonquin Park. His videos can really show you just how well this thing handles rough white water and how well it handles in flat water as well. One of the things that I absolutely love the most about this canoe is that it only weighs 45 pounds. Now I know there are definitely lighter canoes on the market, but they do not offer near the strength or durability of this blue steel material. I feel that this is absolutely one of the best lightweight yet super strong canoes on the market today. So one disadvantage of this canoe, which is a common complaint with the prospectors, not just from Novacraft, but from any manufacturer, is just that they catch the wind. The canoe's body is taller and the shape is just wider and bigger, so it just catches the wind a lot more than some canoes would. That was the wind. The problem with the canoe catching the wind can be minimized by adding weight to the front end and, and trimming the canoe down. So what I did today, I don't have a ton of gear with me, but I grabbed a dumbbell from home. I grabbed a 30 pound dumbbell and I put it inside a dry bag and I set that up in the front of the canoe and it really helps to minimize the wind catching the bow. A bit of a headwind against me. But honestly, that dumbbell up in the front makes such a huge difference. Obviously, if I was going on a multi-day or an overnight trip at all, I wouldn't be bringing a dumbbell. But what I would be doing is taking that dry bag, which is a 35 liter, and filling it full of water. And then putting it up in the front exactly where it is now. It certainly helps with the headwinds. Have you guys ever heard of Adam Schultz? Adam Schultz is Canada's Indiana Jones. He's the author of three books, all which are excellent reads, He's done just some of the coolest expeditions ever. He took a Novacraft Prospector 15 in the Tough Stuff Expedition layup across the Arctic for a 4,000 kilometer total expedition by himself. He took his canoe through the roughest terrain imaginable. And sure, it got banged up, but it didn't puncture and it did not fail him for, I think it was six to eight months he was on that expedition. And that just speaks to the quality and the durability of these Novacraft boats. You know, prospectors are not known for their speed. They're known for their versatility. They're known for being able to go weeks and weeks into the backcountry with tons of gear. They're known for our stability. They're the kind of boat that you want to put a ton of miles on. It's not a designated whitewater boat, but it can handle whitewater really well. It's not a nimble, sleek, fast racing boat, but it goes pretty quick for what it is. I believe Kevin Callens favorite boat is a Novacraft Prospector 16. Adam Schultz, his boat of choice is a Novacraft Prospector 15. It's got to tell you something about Novacraft Prospectors. I ordered this boat sight unseen. And have not regretted it. I ordered this boat without ever having paddled it and have not regretted it at all. Now a really cool thing is that Novacraft started in 1970 and uh, they're based out of London, Ontario which is only an hour from me. That was one of the biggest reasons why I chose to go with Novacraft because they're fairly local to me. They're a Canadian company. I really can't recommend the staff at Novacraft enough. They were so great to deal with. They were so friendly. They were so helpful. And they answered all of my questions without an issue. So if you're in the market for a new boat, you got to try Novacraft. And in particular, this Prospector 15, I think it's just such a versatile, well-rounded, 
well-made boat that can just excel at almost any situation. So I want to say a huge thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions about the Prospector 15 or Novacraft canoes, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks so much folks. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.